live from downtown San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit 2018, brought to you by IBM. We're back at the IBM CDO Strategy Summit in San Francisco. We're at the Park 55. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Krishna Venkatraman, who is with IBM. He's the Vice President of Data Science and Data Governance. Yes. Krishna, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, <coughs> so, let's start with your role. Uh, your passion is really creating value from data. That's something you told me yeah. off camera. It's kind of that's a good passion to have these, these days. So what's your role at IBM? So I work for Indipal, who's a GCDO. He's the CDO for the company. Right. And I joined IBM about a year ago. And what I was intrigued by when I talked to him early on was, um, you know, IBM has so many assets. It's got a huge history and legacy of technology, enormous uh, copious amounts of data. But most importantly, it also has a lot of experience helping customers solve problems at enterprise scale. And in my career, you know, I started at HP Labs many, many years ago. I've been in a few startups. Uh, most recently, before I joined IBM, as I was at OnDeck. What I've always found is that it's it's very hard to extract information and um, insights from data unless you have the end-to-end -end pieces in place. And um, you know, when I was at On Deck, we built all of it from scratch. And I thought, you know, this would be a great opportunity to come to IBM, leverage all that great history and legacy and skill to build something that would allow data to almost be taken for granted. So in a sense, you know, mm. a company doesn't have to, you know, think about the pain of getting value extracted from data. They could just say, you know, I trust data just as I trust the other things in life, like when I go buy a book. I know all the back-end stuff is done for me. I can trust the product I get. And um, I was interested in that, and that's the, uh, that's the role that uh, Indipal offered to me. And so the opposite of On Deck, really. On Deck is uh, kind of a blank sheet of paper, right? Yeah. Uh, and so now you have complex organization, as Indipal was describing yes. this morning. So big challenge, Ginny Rometty at uh, IBM Think talked about incumbent disruptors. So that's essentially what IBM is, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly, the fact is IBM has a history and a culture of making their customers successful. So they understand business problems really well. They have a huge legacy in innovation around technology. And I think now is the right time to put all of those pieces together, right? To string together a sort of life cycle for how data can work for you. So when you embark on a data project, it doesn't have to take six months. It could be done in two or three days because you've cobbled together how to manage data at the back end. You've got the data science and the data science life cycle worked out. And you know how to deploy it into a business process because you understand the business process really well. And I think you know those are the mismatches that I've seen happen over and over again. Data isn't ready for the, for the application of machine learning. The machine learning model really isn't well suited to the eventual environment in which it's deployed. But I think IBM has all of that expertise. And you know, I feel like it's an opportunity for us to tie that together. Well, and everybody's trying to get, I often say, get digital right. Yeah. You know, all your, your customers, your clients, everybody talks about digital transformation. But it's really all about the data, isn't it? Yeah. Getting the data right. Getting the data right, that's where it starts. Uh, tomorrow I'm doing a panel on trust. You know, we can talk about the CDO and all the great things that are happening in extracting value, but unless you have trust at the beginning and you're doing good data governance and you're able to understand your data, all of the rest will never happen. Yeah. But you have to have both. Yeah. Right, because if you have trust without the data value, then exactly. okay. Yeah. Exactly, And you, you do see a lot of organizations just focusing, maybe over-rotating on that privacy and trust and security for good reason. Um, how do you balance that information as an asset versus liability e equation? Because you're trying to get value out of it, at the same yeah. time you're trying to protect your organization. Yeah, I, I think it's a virtuous cycle. I think they mm. build on each other. If customers trust you with their data, they're going to give you more of it because they know you're going to use it responsibly. And you know, I think that's a very positive thing. So I actually look at privacy and trust as enablers to create value, rather than 
you know, somehow they're in competition. Not a zero-sum game. Not at all. Yeah. It's a. Let's talk about some more about that. I mean, when you think about, because I've heard this before, is we're gonna, GDPR comes up. Yeah. Hey, we can turn GDPR into an opportunity. It's not just this onerous, even though it is, um, <laughs> you know, re regulatory you know, imposition. Yeah. So maybe some examples, or maybe talk through how organizations can, can take the privacy and trust part of the equation and turn it into value. So very simply, what does GDPR promise, right? It's restoring the fundamental rights of data subjects in terms of their ownership of their data and the processing of their data and the ability to know how that data is used at any point in time. Now imagine if you're a data scientist and you could, for a problem that you're trying to solve, have the same kind of guarantees. You know all about the data, you know where it resides, you know exactly what it contains. They're very similar. You know, they both are asking for the same type of information. So in a sense, if you solve the GDPR problem well, you have to really understand your data assets very well. Mm -hmm. And you have to have it governed really well. Which is exactly the same need for data scientists. So in a way, I see them as, you know, they're twins, separated at some point, but. Well, it's interesting uh, too, yeah. you think about, and we were sort of talking about this off camera, but now, you're one step away from going to a, a user or a customer or, you know, and saying, here, here's your data, do what you like with it. Now, okay, in the one case, GDPR, you control it, sort of, but yeah. the other is, you, if you want to monetize your own data, why, you know, why pay the search company for, for clicking on an ad? Why not monetize your own data based on your reputation? Or do you see a day where, where consumers <laughs> will actually be able to, to own, truly own their own data? I think as a consumer as well as a data professional, I think that um, the technologies are falling into place for that model to possibly become real. Mm. Um, so if you have something that's very valuable that other people want, there should be a way for you to get some remuneration for that, right? And maybe it's something like a blockchain. You contribute your data and then when that data is used, you get some little piece of it as your reward for that. I don't know, I think it's possible. I, I haven't really... Nirvana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if we could talk about disruption. Yeah. Maybe we talked about that. We haven't had a ton of conversations here about disruption. It seems to be more applying disciplines to, <coughs> to create data value, but coming from the financial services industry, there's an industry that really hasn't been highly disrupted. You know, on deck in, in a way was you know, trying to, trying uh, to disrupt. It, yeah. uh, healthcare is another one that hasn't been disrupted. Aerospace really hasn't been disrupted. Other industries like publishing and music, taxis, you know, hotels have, have been disrupted. Um, and I, as a, my, the premise is, it's it's the data that enables that that disruption. Thoughts on disruption from the standpoint of your your clients and how you're helping them become incumbent disruptors. Yeah, I think I think sometimes disruption happens. Uh, and then you look back and you say, that was disrupted after all. And you don't <laughs> notice it when it happens. Right. So even if I look at financial services and I look at small business lending, the expectations of businesses have changed on how they would access capital in that case. Even though you know, the, the early providers of that service may not be the ones who win in the end, that's a different matter. So I think the idea that uh, you know, I've, and I feel like this confluence of technologies, whether it's blockchain or quantum computing, or you know, the even regulation that's coming in that's sort of forcing certain types of activities around cleaning up data, they're all happening simultaneously. I think we will see certain industries and certain processes transform dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah. I'm Orange Bank was an example that, that came up this morning, and all, yeah. all digital bank, you can't yeah. call them. Right. Yes. You, you yes. Exactly. Walk into their branch, and do you think you think banks will lose control of the uh, of the payment systems? They've always done a pretty good job of hanging on to them, but yeah. You know. I don't know. Um, I think ultimately, customers are going to go to institutions they trust, so it's all going to end up with. Do you trust the entity you've given this? your precious commodities to, right? Your, uh, your data, your information. I think companies that really take that seriously and not take it as a burden uh, are the ones who are going to find that customers are going to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. So it's more about not necessarily 
whether banks are going to lose control or whether it's which banks are going to win is the way I would look at it. Yeah. Right, well, maybe the existing banks might, <laughs> might, 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 might get yeah. trouble. But there's so, so many diff different interesting disruption scenarios. I mean, you think about Watson and, and healthcare. I mean, we'll, maybe we're at the point already where, where machines can make better diagnoses than, yeah. than doctors. You think about retail. I mean, certain retail won't go away. Obviously, grocery and you know, maybe high-end you know, luxury malls won't go away, but you wonder about the future of, of retail as a result of this data d disruption. Um, your thoughts? On retail, um, I, I do feel like um, because power, the data is getting more, um, people are going to have more access to their own information it will lead to a change in business models in certain cases. And um, you know the friction or the, the forces that used to keep customers at certain, with certain businesses may, may dissolve. And mm. so if you don't have friction, then it's going to end up with value and loyalty and, and service. And those are the ones I think that will thrive. Yeah. Client comes to you, says, Krishna, I'm really struggling with my overall data strategy, um, my data platform, governance, skills, all the things that Interpol talked about this morning. Where do, where do I start? I would start with making sure that the client has really thought about the questions they need answered. What is it that you really want to answer with, with data or it doesn't even have to be with data. For the business, whether it's strategy, whether it's tactics, there have to be a set of questions framed up that are truly important to that business. And then starting from there, you can say, you know, let's flow it down and see what technologies, what types of data will help support answering those questions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a, there has to be an overarching value proposition that you're trying to solve for. Um, and I see, you know, that's why when, the way we work in our organization is we look at use cases mm -hmm. as a way to drive the technology adoption. What are the big business processes you're trying to transform? What's the value you expect to create? So we have a very uh, robust discovery process where we ask people to answer those types of questions. We help them with it. Uh, we ask them to think through what they would do if they had the perfect answer, how they would implement it, how they would measure it. And then we start working on the technology. Mm -hmm. I often think technology is an easier question to answer once you know what you want to yeah, ask. Totally. Yeah. Is that how you spend your time, mostly working with the lines of business, trying to help them sort of answer those questions? That is one part of my or? charter. Yeah. So my charter involves uh, basically four areas. The first is data governance, just making sure that we are creating all the tools and processes so that we can guarantee that when data is used, it is trusted, it is, it is certified, and that it's always going to be reliable. The second piece is building up a real data competency and data science competency in the, in the organization. So we know how to use data for different types of business value. And then the third is actually taking these uh, client engagements internally and making sure that they are successful. So our model is what we call co-creation. We ask business teams to contribute their own resources, data engineers, data scientists, uh, business experts, we contribute specialized skills as well, and so we're jointly in the game together, mm. right? So that's the third piece. And the last piece is we're building out this platform that Indipal showed this morning. Yeah. Um, that platform needs product management. So we're also working on what are the fundamental pieces of functionality we want in the platform, and how do we make sure they're on the roadmap and they're prioritized in the right way. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Krishna, thanks very much for oh, coming on theCUBE. Thank Cube. you very it's much. A pleasure meeting you. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE live from IBM CDO Summit in San Francisco. We'll be right back.